In our everyday lives, we can deal with many of the risks we face. We put locks on our doors, we install smoke alarms, we wear seat belts. But what about the risks in life that we can't control or avoid? What happens when a natural disaster overwhelms us? What happens when nature flexes its muscles and puts entire communities in jeopardy? We can't stop extreme weather from happening, but as a society, we can reduce the impact that hurricanes, tornadoes, floods, earthquakes, and wildfires have on us and our property. Insurance helps people to recover from catastrophic losses, so that if a disaster does strike, the resources will be there to restore their homes, their businesses, and their communities. Insurance helps to put things back the way they were. Spreading the losses of the few who are affected among the many throughout the population is what insurance is all about. And experts believe that the weather is only going to get worse with a more frequent and severe impact on society. One of the areas that we've chosen to focus on is that the change in the climate is leading to more vulnerability. And how do we address that? How do we design homes for the future that will reflect the kind of weather that we're going to increasingly see? How do we develop our infrastructure? How do governments work with businesses, work with individuals so that they can cope? And the insurance industry has been at the forefront supporting our research and communicating our findings. Dealing with risk is at the heart of insurance. But what do we actually buy when we pay for insurance? We are buying peace of mind that if something happens and we have coverage, then our insurance will help us to recover from that loss. Here's how it works. Insurance companies collect the premium that you and I pay and add this to the premiums from all the policyholders. And from this large pool of funds, they compensate those customers who have suffered a loss. Now the same principle applies to whole communities. Local governments are able to buy insurance to share the risk among a large number of communities and insurance companies. Through insurance, they protect themselves against a catastrophic event. On Sunday, January the 4th, 1998, freezing rain began to fall in eastern Ontario and southwestern Quebec. And by January the 10th, between 73 and 108 millimeters of ice had accumulated across an expanse from Kingston, Ontario to Montreal, Quebec. Ice storms can be winter's worst weather. More slippery than snow, freezing rain is tough and tenacious, clinging to every object it touches. Now, little can be dangerous. A lot can be catastrophic. The 1998 ice storm paralyzed one of the largest populated and urbanized areas of North America, leaving more than four million people freezing in the dark for hours, if not days. As an adjuster in the ice storm of 1998, arriving at the scenes of people's homes in the devastation of the ice storm was just an unbelievable experience. It was very difficult to deal with the people, their emotions, they'd been without water, they've lost uh, things in their home, uh, pipes have burst, uh, they have water damage, they have no heat, um, they really can't live where they're living and the areas surrounded by outside devastation of the trees that are broken, the forests that are gone, uh, their army is driving around in trucks and the hydro crews trying to get heat back. It, it was something that I've never experienced, I never want to experience again, but it was, um, it was the human element when you're out there with the person. On September 29th, 2003, at 10 minutes after midnight, Hurricane Juan made landfall on the coast of Nova Scotia, just 30 kilometers southwest of Halifax. Canada's most catastrophic hurricane in 50 years, the Category 2 storm packed gusts of 185 kilometers per hour and pushed mountainous ocean waves of 20 meters as it steamrolled onto land with the Maritime's most populous city in its sights. Come in the harbor, just ripped right up the harbor this way and hit, hit, hit land out off of this area, came up the harbor, 
there's a rail line on the edge of the harbor by Dartmouth. Just to put things in perspective, there's rail cars there all the time. The, the wind was so strong, it toppled the rail cars there. That's, that'll give you an idea it was. And it went up uh, right across the land in a, I'm not sure how wide a path it was. It, was, it wasn't all that wide of a path, uh, uh, but it, it went right, right through, uh, through, the, through the middle of the province, uh, through Pictou County, then over to PEI and caused great devastation into Charlottetown through the uh, through the city and uh, uh, stacked up uh, <laughs> piles of sailboats in the, in the marina there in Charlottetown and so on. The morning of the hurricane the, the power was out all over the city and, and surrounding areas and uh, we were able to marshal our troops together very quickly get in touch with our, our cat catastrophe team in, in our head office and uh, and get up and running very quickly. We, we help people every day and just uh, as I said we, we were so proud of our staff when we got through this and I and I think uh, uh, I speak for, for our industry in this area I think all, all my uh, all my associates were very proud of, of all their people. The, the management of disasters is a field that it brings people from many different disciplines together. Uh, it was often seen primarily as a role for engineers or natural scientists to do their work uh, as somebody who's personally involved in the social scientists, I, I'm an economist, we've been able to bring another perspective and part of the work of our institute and the support coming from the insurance industry has been to involve historians and sociologists and people from many different backgrounds to say that these complicated events that are disrupting society need to be better managed, need to be addressed, need to understand the engineering but also the economics and the social science aspects of it. What happens when a city is pummeled by a rainfall that's only supposed to happen once every 290 years? What happens is that the sheer volume of water overwhelms it. In a span of five hours, 14 billion liters of water came down. Now that's enough to fill the Rogers Centre nine times or sustain the flow of water over Niagara Falls for 40 minutes. No sewer system in the world is designed to accommodate the deluge Peterborough experienced. And with nowhere else for the water to go, it found its way into almost 2,000 basements. Going into any natural disaster, particularly a flood, is a very gut-wrenching time. You see the, the aftermath of what these, this, this event can do, how it has affected people's lives, and how it's going to affect their lives, perhaps some time to come. When you see everyone's furnishings on the lawn, when you see everyone's prized possessions, it could be, you say, your iPod, your computer, your diary, everything. Because these natural disasters are, 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 take nothing into consideration, say we should leave this alone or that alone, it will not, it will take everything with it. When I see people's most prized possessions there and how they're affected by it, it can't help you. And I've been in a few catastrophes, but everyone I've gone to, that first moment I get there, I'm almost overwhelmed by the, by the tragedy that could have been. Whether it be Quebec, the Caribbean, Peterborough, or where, anywhere else I've been, is, is, is to be hope to people who are put out. And what all natural disasters, we cannot prevent them, we cannot stop them, we know they're going to happen, but what we can do is say that even in the midst of the worst one, uh, there's still hope there, and the insurance industry provides that hope. By August 16th of 2003, Southern British Columbia had gone through three years of the hottest, driest weather in 100 years and set a record for 44 consecutive rainless days. When the strong winds and lightning hit, they touched off a wildfire inferno that consumed almost 26,000 hectares and 239 homes during the next 30 days. The most expensive and the most damaging wildfires in British Columbia's recorded history saw walls of flame moving through the forest near Kelowna at a speed of over 10 meters per minute to threaten cities, neighborhoods, homes and businesses. Entire towns were burned to the ground. 50,000 people had to be evacuated from their homes. A cruel irony? When the rains finally did come, the scorched and crusted earth was unable to absorb it, leading to flash floods and further devastation. The fires came down across the hills here, and you can still see some of the trees that were burnt during the fire. They did a lot of logging and, and clearing out after the fire, but certainly this is where the fire traveled uh, down the hills into these neighborhoods. And you can still see you know, the remnants and some of the burnt trees, stumps and everything that are left uh, from the fire as it traveled down the mountain. 
you know, and this is, you know, all the people that stood on the other side of the lake and just, you know, I had people tell me, you know, we, we were looking through binoculars and we knew that was our house and, you know, all of a sudden it just gone like that. Getting close to 50,000 people evacuated and those first few days when the evacuation order was in place was, you know, coordinating a team. We brought people in from across Canada, you know, our head office uh, experts were involved other adjusters that have been involved in catastrophes and wildfires were brought in, uh, you know, in anticipation. So the first thing they did was let, you know, once the evacuation order lifted, the, the wind changed and the fire kind of went back up the mountain. They let the homeowners and the media back in. Well, there may not be anything we can do to prevent catastrophic weather, but the insurance industry is doing something about helping Canadians to weather the storms. The Institute for Catastrophic Loss Reduction is working to understand how storms affect our communities and what we can do to lessen the consequences. Working on the area of disaster risk reduction is a very exciting field. It's leading international bodies like the United Nations to bring people together from around the world. Initially, it brought people from the engineering and natural sciences fields, but it is now starting to attract people from the social sciences. My background is in economics. We have sociologists, historians, a number of people from different fields coming together, collectively giving us a much better understanding of what has happened and how to better manage them in the future. The main focus of our current work is what we call science to action, or insurers building resilient communities. We're looking at the science so that we understand how to deal with today's climate and future climate that's going to come. We're testing design and construction of homes. From the scientific research, we can translate that into a building guide that we've given to, cons to builders and say, here's how to build a house that meets the building code and goes beyond. We've already started the process of identifying the specific features that for a relatively small upfront investment can lead to a much more resilient and strong home. Some homeowners are going to want this and are going to be willing to pay a bit more for a safer home. Some insurers are going to want to know what makes for a better home so they can offer cheaper insurance for a less risky home. We're doing the science and making it as available as we can. Well, as you've seen, environmental disasters can happen anywhere, anytime. And while technology and contingency planning can reduce some of that risk, the safety net that insurance can provide helps communities and individual families to recover from the power of nature's most extreme weather. By sharing the risk of catastrophic loss among all of us, we can rebuild and restore those homes, businesses and communities affected by environmental disasters. Canada's insurers provide comprehensive disaster loss prevention advice and services to homeowners and home builders, to the owners of small businesses, to the leaders of our communities. Canada's property and casualty insurers are on the front lines of disaster restoration. The claims adjusters and investigators we send into the field are the professionals who survey the damage and work with policyholders to make things right. They arrange for alternate accommodation. They find the tradespeople to restore the properties. They provide the peace of mind that things can be made right again. Canadians rely on the insurance industry when nature turns nasty.